The First Messenian War was a war between Messenia and Sparta. It began in 743 BC and ended in 724 BC, according to the dates given by Pausanias. The war continued the rivalry between the Achaeans and the Dorians that had been initiated by the return of the Heracleidae. Both sides utilized an explosive incident to settle the rivalry by full-scale war. The war was prolonged into 20 years. The result was a Spartan victory. Messenia was depopulated by emigration of the Achaeans to other states. Those who did not emigrate were reduced socially to helots, or serfs. Their descendants were held in hereditary subjection for centuries until the Spartan state finally needed them for defense. Dates Pausanias Standard Dates Pausanias says that the opening campaign was a surprise attack on Amphia by a Spartan force commanded by Alcmenes, Agiad king of Sparta, in the second year of the Ninth Olympiad. The end of the war was the abandonment of Mount I.T. home in the first year of the 14th Olympiad. The time of the war is so clearly fixed at 743-740 seconds BC through 724-720 seconds BC that other events in Greek history are often dated by it. Pausanias evidently had access to a chronology of events by Olympiad. The details of the war are not so certain but Pausanias gives an evaluation of his two main sources, the epic poem by Riano Zabene for the first half and the prose history of Myron of Priene for the second half. Nothing survives now of the sources except fragments. Dates by the archaeology of Taurus and Nasson A second method of dating presented by John Coldstream takes archaeology into consideration as well as other literary evidence. Arriving at somewhat later dates, Argos had entered the war on the Messenian side toward the end of it. They decided to eliminate Athens in reprisal for its assistance to Sparta during the Spartan invasion of Argos. After the war, Sparta placed the refugees in a new settlement called Athens on the Messenian Gulf, today's Koroni. The destruction level at the old Essen is dated 710 BC, more precise actually than can be obtained for most archaeological dates. A second piece of apparently archaeologically supported evidence is the settlement of the Parthenieri at Taras in Italy. During the war while the men were away a certain number of Spartan ladies bore illegitimate children to non-Spartiate fathers some with husbands stationed in Messenia. These Parthenieri were denied citizenship. Not being welcome in Sparta they became a civic problem ultimately staging a rebellion. They were sent off under Philanthus at the suggestion of the Delphic Oracle to found Taras at Satyrin later a suburb of Tarentum. Pottery from there is exclusively Greek and geometric from about 700 BC. Eusebius says Taras was founded in 706 BC, granting a precision to the 710 date he does not grant to the 700 date and presuming the juveniles were sent away immediately after the war. Coldstream formulates new dates for the War of 730-710 BC. Background Early rejection of the Heraclid king the Peloponnese had been Achaean before the return of the Heracleidae in 1104. The three victorious Dorian commanders, who were Heraclids, divided the Peloponnese between them. Temenus took Argos, Aristodemus took Sparta and Cresfontes took Messenia. The previous ruling family of Messenia, the Nelides, had emigrated with the Atreids, rulers of Mycenae and Argos, to Athens. Most of the Achaeans remained in place. The Dorians colonized Sparta, then a small state on the east of the central Eurotas Valley. Aristodemus was assassinated leaving Sparta to be ruled by his twin sons under a Theban regent, Therus, their mother's brother. When the twins reached majority Therus led a colony to Thera. Meanwhile the Messenians had accepted Cresfontes as king after he married Merope, daughter of Cypsilus, king of Arcadia and Anakian. They gave up some land to another Dorian enclave in Messenia. Subsequently the noble families of the Achaeans staged an insurrection, assassinating Cresfontes and all but one of his sons in a single coup. 
the youngest, Epitus, was being educated in Arcadia. Acceptance of the Epitidae Epitus on reaching manhood shortly was restored by the kings of Sparta, Argos and Arcadia. The Messenian aristocracy was won by gifts and kindness, except for the regicides, who were executed. Epitus founded a dynasty of kings of Messenia, the Epitidae. The Heraclid part of the family background was explicitly dropped. The Epitidae integrated totally into Achaean culture. They took the ancient Achaean shrine on the summit of Mount I.T. home as their own, compelling the Dorians to worship there also. Ultimately under King Phintus they joined the yearly festival to Apollo at Delos, the very central festival and most important place of worship of the Ionians, the descendants of the Achaeans. This Achaeanizing provoked the Dorians living in Messenia. They viewed themselves as dominant over the Achaeans by right of conquest. They were supported in this view by Sparta, which had maintained a successful Dorian enclave, eventually achieving ascendance over the Achaeans in the Eurotas Valley, who became the Periaresia. The raid on the Temple of Artemis Limnatius The intense ethnic animosity and contention that prevailed between the Dorians and the Achaeans is illustrated by an incident of violence that occurred 25 years prior to the First Messenian War. During a festival at the Temple of Artemis Limnatius around 768 BC, this was the year that King Phintus, considered Dorian by the Dorians, brought Messenia to an Ionian festival. The temple was on the border between Messenia and Laconia and only Messenians and Laconians worshipped there. Artemis, sister of Apollo, had long been a popular goddess among the Mycenaean Greeks. Pausanias relates two versions of the story. The Spartan version tells of the raping of virgins and the killing of the king of the Agiad line in Sparta, Teleclos. Ordinarily festivals and temples were sacred and were conducted on sacred ground in Greece. Even hunted men could take refuge in a temple because of the taboo against violence. The Spartan version does not explain why the Messenians came to worship and suddenly began committing rape and murder on sacred ground. The Messenian story says that the virgins were beardless soldiers dressed up as women under the leadership of Teleclos, and that the soldiers intended to get close to the Messenian aristocracy for an attempt at their lives. The usual religious considerations may not have been considered to apply since the shrine was an Achaean center, not a Dorian one. The soldiers selected for their beardlessness turned out to be too inexperienced, though, and the Messenian leaders easily threw them off and assassinated their commander. Pausanias says, those are the stories. Believe one or the other according to which side you want to be on, cause. Immediate provocation A generation later, the mutual hatred of the Laconians and Messenians came to a head. The immediate provocation was an incident of cattle theft. Polycares of Messenia, an athlete and Olympic victor, leased some grazing land from Euiphnos the Spartan, who promptly sold the cattle to some merchants, claiming pirates had stolen them. As he was making excuses to Polycares a herdsman of the latter, having escaped from the merchants, intervened to acquaint his master with the real fact. Apologizing Euiphnos asked Polycares to let his son go with him to obtain the money from the sale, but once over the Spartan border he murdered the son. Polycares petitioned the Spartan magistrates for justice. Despairing of it he began to murder such Spartans as he could catch at random. The Spartans demanded extradition of Polycares. The Messenian magistrates insisted on an exchange for Euiphnos. At this point the incident exploded into violence at the national level. The Spartans sent a delegation to petition the kings of Messenia, nominally Heraclids. Androcles was for extradition, Antiochus against. The whole history of Spartan-Messenian relations was reviewed, including the assassination of Teleclus 25 years earlier and the discussion became so heated that weapons were drawn. The parties of the two kings assaulted each other and Androcles was killed. Antiochus told the Spartans he would submit the case to the courts at Argos and Athens. 
Antiochus died a few months later and his son, Euphes, succeeded him. The law case seems to have vanished. Shortly after a Spartan army under both kings of Sparta launched an invasion of Messenia. Possible underlying causes Pausanias states the details of the immediate provocation for war and expresses his view that the underlying cause was ethnic and regional tension between Laconia and Messenia. Various scholars have given speculative analyses of the underlying causes throughout the centuries since Pausanias. A recent historian, William Dunstan, guesses that the Spartan invasion, except for the Spartan colony of Tarentum, was an alternative to the colonization undertaken by most of the other states of Greece to relieve overpopulation at home. No evidence is offered for that view. He also implies that the Spartan aristocracy were moved by the desire for wealth. Based on a cultural flaw root and some foreign goods dating to the orientalizing period found during the excavation of the Temple of Artemis Orthia in Sparta, no such motives appear in the classical sources. As Dunstan points out, after about 600 BC Spartan luxuries were in deficit. The Spartan economy improved significantly with the inflow of dues from the new helot class of Messenia. There is no evidence that this economic arrangement was intended beforehand as a cause of the war. The strongest case for an underlying, in this case ulterior, Spartan motive for the war is an admission by one of the Spartan kings that the Spartans needed Messenian land. The Spartan constitution was already in effect by the time the war broke out. The Spartans had already produced a professional army, which is evidenced not only by their tactics in the war but by the reluctance of the Messenians to engage them. Like Hergus had redistributed all the land in Lacedaemon, creating 39,000 equal plots, of which 9,000 went to the Spartiates and 30,000 to the Periaresia. The source of this information, Plutarch, states two opinions as to the location of the 9,000. Either 6,000 originally in Lacedaemon with 3,000 in Messenia, added by King Polydorus, victor of the First Messenian War, or 4,500 in each region. Aristotle later stated that the Spartans could support 3,000 infantry and 1,500 cavalry. Each Spartiate must by law have his own kleros, or an alienable plot of land. Burkhart notes that Polydorus, questioned whether he wanted to go to war against brothers replied, All we want is land not yet distributed, that is, not yet divided by lot for our people. Thucydides states that Sparta controlled two-fifths of the Peloponnese, which according to Nigel Kennel is 8,500 square kilometers. Using this figure as a rough estimate of the amount of land occupied by 39,000 Cleroy obtains a figure of 54 acres per Cleros, a significant agricultural estate. As citizenship and other social status depended on the possession of one the availability of land must have been a strong motive.